Hello everybody, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you and yours are doing well. Today we are going to be doing a major, major unhaul. Now this might not seem major for many people because there's only about like 10 to 15 books I think, but this I have not done an unhaul of this Gravity in a while. I am not lacking space by any means on my bookshelves. I have a bookcase here which still has space a bit everywhere and I have bookshelves on the other side of my room, but I really want my collection of books to be books that I love, books that I adore, books that I want to keep. And some of these just don't have that much meaning to me anymore or I just haven't read them and I know I'm not going to read them. But don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like and comment the video if you enjoy it. And let's get into it. So the first two books I have to share are the first two books in the... I don't even know what the series is called, by Pitticus Lore. Uh, I Am Number Four, this was a movie that I watched when I was younger and I absolutely adored the movie. Like it was just so fun, so interesting. The character was really hot. And I always told myself that I wanted to read the books because I have heard good things. So I bought these at uh, my thrift store near my house for like four bucks each. And I was convinced that I would read these one day. Evidently that did not happen. I've had these for like probably going on five years now. Clearly I have no intentions of reading them. I just think I've moved on from like the time frame of when these would have been like really good for me. Continuing on on the fantasy, I have the entire Iscari series by Kristen uh, Ciccarelli. Um, I read this entire series. This is one of those that I've read. The Last Namsara, which is book one, was actually pretty good. I actually enjoy this. I have, still have my tabs in. I need to like go... Um, how do YouTubers do this? How do I... There you go. <laughs> the second one, which is The Caged Queen, is very bad, very poor. I hated this. It was so boring. It was so flat. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the plot. It was just... It wasn't for me. But then I pushed through because I already owned it. I read the third one, The Skyweaver, which is an FF pirate romance, which I actually did enjoy. And overall, the series, while it wasn't my favorite, there were definitely some good elements, especially that I liked two of the three books. I just have no want to keep them i feel like this is one of those books that i would much rather somebody gets especially that they're very low-key i feel like if somebody picks them up and ends up enjoying them the way that i know most people would enjoy them if they read it i feel like that's super cool so and we have two favorites that i read i just and i enjoyed i just don't want to keep and that is the wrath and the dawn and the rose and the dagger by renee arias i had a bunch of tabs in these i just recently took them out um actually i still have two here that i gotta take out so the thing with this book is that i read it because they're really popular on book talk and book one i really enjoyed like the wrath and the dawn the Wrath and the Dawn, I really enjoyed this. I thought the concept was cool. I thought that the way that the romance developed was so honest and true. Like, they went from, like, hating each other, or at least she hated him, to, like, friends, to, like, him knowing that he couldn't open up. He feels cursed, but he loves her, and then she loves him. And it was just, like, it was wonderful. I actually really, really enjoyed this. And going into book two, I was really hyped about the plot, about the continuation of the development of the romance. But I will say that this book is a lot more centered on the plot. Like, the characters are together, like, maybe a total of, like, 30, 40 pages in this book. Like, it is, they, they, they barely have in, any interaction, which is so odd. Like, they're separated from most of the book because this book really sets up their romance. And then this book is really plot-focused. So I think that's why this duology lost me a little. is because we went from, like, somewhat of a romance-heavy to a plot-heavy, which is fine. I'm not saying that's wrong. It just wasn't for me. And though I, I gave this 4.25 and I gave this 4, so I still enjoy it. Like, overall, it's a 4. I just know that I probably won't ever reread this series and I know that they're such a classic favorite for so many that I just I would rather someone read them. Next up we have On the Comet by Angie Thomas. This is another book that I did read. Um, so I read The Hate You Give last January and I really enjoyed it. It's just it didn't hit the way that The Hate You Gave hit in the sense of like I enjoyed the story and I enjoyed the message but it just like everything else just kind of didn't intrigue me didn't interest me like the romance that we get for like three pages total was like probably the most interesting part for me which feels so stupid because that was not the point of this book but like i just i don't know if it's because i, I i'm not a musician so maybe it, it's much more catered to people who are affected by this message and this idea of trying to make it it just didn't hit me the way that the other one hit me but i know that this author is really popular and i would much rather this go to someone who would enjoy it I'm gonna stop saying that because it's gonna get very annoying. Next up, we have The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Han. This is a Christmas book. I saw this on Booktube years ago, and I'm someone who never read holiday books. So last January, I told myself, okay, I'm gonna read some holiday books. Like, I'm gonna be that person. So I picked this one up, and to be honest, I enjoy this. This is basically a hedgehog day Christmas a past christmas carol kind of twist and i enjoyed it for the most part i will say i'm someone who has kind of lost interest in magical realism i'd much rather you do fantasy or you do just like real life fiction the blend of the two sometimes doesn't hit and it's just like as much as i enjoyed it in the moment i know that i'm never going to reread this so i'd rather just give it away then we have between us and the moon by rebecca meisel meisel uh i read this two three years ago before the summer before covid basically and i enjoyed it for the most part i love summer romances i love romances where you have one person that's on vacation and then one local and they kind of like fall in love i read a lot of those when i was younger 
and this was good this was fun i think he's older she's younger she's smart he's not i'm enjoying it to the point that i've kept this around for two years i had full-on intentions of like keeping this forever um but during my last unhaul a few days ago i was like you know what maybe i don't want to keep this forever so i'm gonna unhaul this so the next book we have is Again But Better by Christine Riccio. And this is a book that I actually struggled with deciding if I wanted to give it away or not because I really enjoy the main character of this book. I really related with her. But that thing with this book is that it is magical realism, which I did not know going into it. And I feel like I was really enjoying the book up until that part. And then when I got to that part and I was like, wait, what? And like, I, I enjoy the concept and I know what the author was going for. I know what she was going for. It just, maybe because I didn't expect it, it just came out of nowhere a little and I was like, whoa. And so for that reason, I know I'll never reread this. Um, and it is a good book. It has a good message. I, I would like someone to read this and kind of experience or see myself the way that I saw myself a little with this book. It just, the whole magical realism aspect just kind of like took me out. Of then we have To Kill a Mockingbird by, I don't really know who, uh, Harper Lee. Um, I bought this because of this cool slip edition. I'm going to be honest, I don't think I'll ever read this. And if I do, I want to read my classics in paperback. I don't want hardcover classics because I want to annotate and flip it and, and ruin the spine and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, plus, To Kill a Mockingbird is not a classic that really intrigues me. I'd rather read more like British classics than like American literature classics. I don't really have more to say to this other than I my interest is gone. Then we have The Chemist by Stephanie Mayer. This is another book I read, another book I did not love. Honestly, the thing with this book is that there's one thing I didn't like, but I don't remember if it was the female or if it was the male love interest. I know there's one of them that I really did not enjoy. The whole time that I was reading this, I was like, you suck. So I don't know who the you is. I bought this and read this because I told myself that I would read everything published by Stephanie Amir. Like I have two editions of Twilight. I have two editions of The Host. Like I love those books and I adore those books. Those books mean a lot to me. And this is her only other release. So I was like, well, let me read it. And it just, it didn't hit, it didn't hit. I think she's much more of a fantasy, like dystopian writer than like an action. And I appreciate the book for what it tried to be, which is like this really intense action, female oriented, badass book. And I will say that this was initially in talks for a show. And I think that this would make a great show. The book itself just, like the little. Then we have We Free the Stars by Hasfa Faisal. Has, ha, by ha, Hafsa Faisal. Hopefully I pronounced that right. So I bought this book on Book Outlet a few months ago and I told myself that I would buy this one because it was like six bucks and then I would buy the hardcover at like Indigo or something. But since buying it, I have heard a lot about this book and not bad things, just things that I know I won't enjoy. Mainly that it is a very, 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 very slow burn. And I do not like slow burns. I'm not a slow burn lover. And second, that it is much more plot oriented than like romance oriented, which again is fine. But for me specifically, especially in relation to YA fantasy, I need a somewhat heavy romance centered book and not just plot centered. If not, I'm not going to be interested. I'm not going to stay engaged. I'm going to get bored. It's just the way that I've been seeing things recently with how I read YA fantasy. And this is one that I'm almost certain I will not enjoy. I mean, look how thick this is. Then we have Bad Girls Don't Die by Katie Allender. This is like a YA horror book and I actually really enjoyed this. I read this in October and it was fun. It was creepy. I feel like the author did such a good job at making you understand the creepy like hoary things that were happening without like going too much into it that it can't be classified as YA. Um, it gave me the chills. It, it kept me honestly on the edge of my seat and I enjoyed it. I don't think I'll ever reread it because this kind of has a bit of a plot twist that if you know it, it kind of takes away from like the edginess. I don't feel a need to hold, hold on to this. I found this book through booktube. It's like people know about it. It's like a thing. So hopefully someone who knows it's a thing finds it. And then the last two things I'll be unholding are two pretty popular series. First one is going to be the To All The Boys I Love Before series by Jenny Han. I read these books, watched the movies. I enjoyed the movies. I enjoyed the books. I don't think I'll ever reread the books just because the movies... I felt they did a good enough job that if I ever want to re-experience these characters, I'll just watch the movie. Plus my friend wants these, so I'll be giving them to her. She'll enjoy them much more than I will. And then last but not least, we have The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. There's quite an interesting story to this. So basically, I had a friend who had the entire six books of the Mortal Instruments series. She bought the she bought the box set and then the bookstore accidentally shipped her two rather than one. So she always told me that she would give me one of her extra box sets. And I was like, hey, beautiful, like... How insane is that? I'm gonna save all kinds of money. Like, thank you so much. Like, she was my best friend at the time. And so I bought these books in anticipation of getting that other, like, Mortal Instruments series so I could read them in conjunction. But that friend never, after like two and a half years, never gave me that box set. And now we're not friends anymore. So I'll definitely never be getting that box set. In addition, I know that this does not end 
good like there's not a happy ending with this i looked into the ending because i was very curious and i absolutely hate the way it ends so i will never ever ever be reading this in addition the same friend who was taking my laura jean books read these doesn't own them absolutely loves it and has always wanted to own this series so i'm giving it to her i actually have sold a few books in the last few weeks as well but these are the books that i still own that i will be either selling giving to my local bookstore or like i said a few to my friend thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video i know that unhauls can be kind of daunting sometimes but let me tell you if you have not done one in a while do it do it on hauls it feels so good i feel free i feel free now what am i gonna do with this freedom go buy more books so you know <laughs> i hope you have a wonderful day don't forget to subscribe like this video comment all my other social media will be linked down below and i'll see you next time bye